so many more people than I thought. <laughs> when we first started, um, as Pastor Chris said, um, I was a creep outside of IHOP waiting for them to finish eating. And I lingered at the table for a while and just said, when are they going to finish? Are they done? Um, and they stand up and I go, they're done now. I can so go up to them and say, hey, I need something from you. And they stayed there talking for a while and I said, huh, they're not done. I got to wait for them outside then. And I waited outside and it was the best decision I've made in my life. Um, Pastor Lou and Pastor Chris have been great mentors for three years. Um, I've been here in Victory Church. I have a great mentor as a worship leader, um, Kimberly Murphy. Um, she is not only my friend, but she is my best friend, and she's a great leader as well. And each one of you guys, um, I know you guys individually, and I love you guys, and you guys are my family. That's why this makes it so much easier to do. Um, if you know anything, standing up in a platform, it's fairly difficult. Your knees start shaking, you can't see it, but they're so shaking, but it's okay, you know? So, let's get started. My name is Kimberly. It is a privilege to be able to worship um, together and also be able to have the message out for you guys today. Today is not only kids service, but it's also water baptism Sunday. Um, it is one of the best times of the year. It's the best time Sunday because we get to witness all those who have followed our steps and are guiding into taking God into their lives. And it's an amazing experience for anybody who knows that. It's incredible, right? But in our kids' ministry, we use a lot of object lessons. In our object lessons, we, it allows us to capture the attention of our children while we speak about God. So welcome to Kids Church, everyone. All right? So today, I'm going to have a lot of object lessons for you guys. Our theme is new life. The Bible talks about us all, about us all leading Christ in our lives to cleanse us and to make us whole and to live a good life, right? So we go and we try to live our life as pure as we can. But then as we walk in our journey of life, we get dirty. It gets messy and we make the wrong decisions and that's okay. Here on the platform, I have two vases. And in these vases, one says you and me. And the other one is Jesus. It's God. We start off our lives being pure and clean and transparent. That's what we strive to do on a daily basis, right? But as we walk in this life, we start making wrong decisions. We start finding ourselves with people who are not good for us. We start, as children, we, we talk back to our parents. And we start falling away from God. And all these bad decisions cause us to be dirty. When you come to realize it, you're messy and untransparent. You're dirty and sometimes when you realize that you're this dirty, you try to avoid going to church. You try to avoid the Christians and getting with them and being with them. Why? It's because we feel ashamed of what we've done or we feel ashamed of what they can find out of what we have done in our past. But you know what's the best part about God? The best part about him is that he don't care about that. The best part about him is that he doesn't take everything that you've done in your past and throw it back in your face. The best part about God is that he wants to be there right beside you. He wants to give you a good life. He wants you to make good decisions. Once you realize to the point where you are messy and you're not clean and you're not pure at that time, God says, you know what, it's okay, I'm here. That's when you have the liberty of saying, Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want you to give me a new start. I want you to make me new and different and give me that new beginning that you have given me once. That way, when you accept Jesus into your life, he makes everything different. He makes everything whole and he makes everything new. And he brings us back to our path, to our, our origin, which is God. That's what we have to do. When we accept Jesus into our lives, we have two things that we have to do, right, in order to keep us connected to God. But before that, I want to read 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man in Christ, he is a new creature. All things pass away. Behold, all things are new. 
He makes things new every day, right? Does everybody believe that? Amen? Amen. Remember, he's not here to judge you. He's not here to judge me. He's just here to lead you in the right way and guide you and bring you back. One of the things that we have to continue to do and strive in our lives is we have to slay the negative thoughts that come into our mind, right? Living in the world that we live is consistently tempted, and many times we are brought down, but we have to guard our hearts. We have to guard our minds. We have to slay the negative thoughts that enter our minds. There's a saying that says like this, watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. And watch your habits, they become your character. And if you don't watch your character, that becomes your destiny. And you don't want that when you have negative thoughts in your mind. Here we have another demonstration. Right here, this is your mind. When you start applying negative thoughts in your mind, they look like this. It's dirty, it's dark. And you start putting that in your mind. And when people say to you, you're not good enough, or, well, does God really love me? That goes into your mind. Do I really have a purpose and a calling? So what he says, is that true? And all these negative thoughts and start entering your mind and they start lingering. They stay there day and night. And you think about it and it hurts you, right? And does he love me? Am I loved? But for anybody who knows math, if you put one negative and one positive together, it cancels each other out. But if you put two positives and one negative together, the positive is bound to overcome the negative, leaving you with only positive thoughts. So I'm going to show you what God says about you. I'm going to tell you what he says about you. Because when you have negative thoughts, the only way that you can combat it is by putting positive thoughts in your mind. And what better than scriptures that back that up? It says in Colossians 3.12, he calls you chosen. Put on then as God chosen one, holy and beloved, compassionate heart, hearts, kinds, humility, meekness, and patience. So he called you chosen. He calls you his child. He calls you his precious and treasured possession. He calls you his heir. And he calls you holy and blameless. In Ephesians 1, 4, it says, Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. He calls you the apple of his eye. In Psalms 117, a, it says, Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. He calls you blessed. In Psalm 65, 4, it says, Bless is the one you chose and bring near to dwell in the courts. Most of all, he calls you redeemed. In him, we have redemption through blood. Ephesians 1, 7. All these thoughts that came in that once were black and dark was pushed out as you saw when we started putting these scriptures, these positive thoughts in our mind. And that's what you have to do on a daily basis. Remind yourself, I am chosen. I am called with a purpose. I am redeemed. I am an error, an error. I own what my Lord does. He gave me everything. And that's what you have to remind yourself. Give yourself positive thoughts and cancel out all those negative thoughts. Slay them in the name of Jesus. That's what you have to do. Stand up for yourself as a child of God. It says in Romans 2.2, 2, 12, 2, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed and renewing your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. That's what it says in Romans 12. That's Lou preached on the mind, and one of his quotes says, you cannot have a positive life when you have a negative mind. So feed your mind with positive thoughts. Feed your mind with the word of God. Feed your mind with the light that comes from him. It will allow you to have a better outcome in your life. 
The second thing that we have to do is we have to learn how to forgive. It is hard to forgive when someone hurts you. It is hard to forgive when you say, well, you don't know what they did to me. You have no idea how much that hurt me and marked me. And that becomes difficult. Um, I'm going to ask one of my friends from our class, Isaiah, to come up with us. And we're going to show you another object lesson of what it is and what it means to forgive. Miss Marjorie, do you mind coming up with us? Ready? <laughs> okay. Come to the front. So this is our friend Isaiah. Isaiah, say hi to everyone. He's so brave to be with us, right? We have our life as pure as this child, right? We try to be as, as pure and as holy as this is. And when we enter our world, we try and we strive to be pure, right? And we to make good decisions. And it's easy when no one does anything harmful to us. So Isaiah, I want you to be able to walk to Miss Marjorie and then come back. Go as fast as you can. As fast as you can, babe. And come back. Did you have a hard time getting over there? Was it hard to get over there? No? It was easy? All right. Well, that's good. Life is easy when you have no unforgiveness in your heart. When you are good to go and no one hurts you, right? But now, if unforgivingness was tangible and you were able to see it with your eyes, this is what it would look like. Isaiah, can you put on the backpack? In our lives, we start our journey easy and clean and happy and light as can be, right? But we start to encounter things in our lives where it then becomes much difficult for everything. We start getting angry with our moms and our dads. Then we decide that we don't want to go back to church because someone offended me for how I look and how I'm dressing. And then, oh, the worst, they didn't give me what I wanted, when I wanted it, you know? I deserve to have everything, you know? How dare they keep that from me? So, I'm gonna just hold that bitterness. And most of all, does God really love me? Why did he allow me to go through these situations? Why? Why did he make me have to do all of this, you know? Like, I am the best child. I'm easy, I, but I'm so angry, and I can't forgive them because they hurt me so bad. Now, Isaiah, go off, buddy. Walk it out. <laughs> go on, Isaiah. <laughs> go, Isaiah. You can do it, babe. All right. Isaiah, I'm going to help you back this way. This is what unforgiveness looks like. It is heavy. It is painful. And many of the times you go through it alone, right? And it looks funny right now, but a lot of us go through it. The way that we can combat this is forgiving. Ready, Isaiah? We're going to forgive those people who didn't give you everything because sometimes we don't get everything what we want. God allows us to have things in our lives when he wants it, his perfect timing. God enters in our lives and we start forgiving those who have looked at us wrong and said wrong things about us. My skirts are not that short, you guys. They're very long, up to my ankles, so no worries. And then we start forgiving our parents because they know what's best for me. They know what's right for me because God allowed me to have them in my life. And we start letting go of all of these things and guess what? It becomes easier when we learn how to forgive. This baggage that was so tangible becomes lighter when you start to learn to forgive the way God forgave you. So Isaiah, do me a favor. Go run and miss Marjorie. Can you do it as fast as you can, babe? Good job, buddy. Was that easy? It was easier than the weights, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good job, babe. You can go back. It says in Ephesians 4, 31, 32, 
Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawler, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and be compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. We are not who to judge. We all make our own mistakes and errors. We all carry our own baggage of unforgiveness. But you know what? It's okay because God is allowing to forgive you in order for you to forgive others as well. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's what it says, right? So don't let yourself hold back. Don't hold yourself back by not forgiving the slightest thing. Let yourself be free of baggage. Let yourself move on and forward into what God wants you to do in your life. These things, they delay your process in what you have and your destiny and your plan in God. So I encourage you that if you are struggling in your walk with God and you have either bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, if you have a hard time putting positive thoughts in your mind, surround yourself with those who have the word of God and be strong and be bold and know that God is with you all the time. So ending with this is that if you're here today and today's your first time and anything that was spoken is relevant into your life now, we're going to pray that God gives you the strength and God puts people around you and surrounds you with positive and light words so you can continue growing in your life. So if you guys just don't mind standing up with me for a second. And you put your hand on your brother next to you. You don't know who they are at times, and sometimes you do. But when they're home, you don't know what they struggle in. You don't know where their mind is. So we are going to encourage one another as brothers, as sisters, as families to connect and help one another grow in God. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this word, God. Thank you because we know that your word is true and is light and is and it's fruitful into our lives, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to share this word with your congregation, Lord, and your family. We ask that if anybody is struggling, God, to live a pure life and clean life and the right life that guides us straight to you and is disconnecting us from you, God, that you allow us to come back to center, come back to focus, God. If we're struggling with dark thoughts that perhaps our families in the past have placed on our minds or that we have placed on our own, Father Lord, let your word be true. Let your word overpower these negative thoughts, God, and that only that lingers in the day in and day out is your word, Lord. And if each one of us are struggling with some kind of unforgivingness, God, we ask that you put peace and love into their hearts, that they are able to forgive God, the way that you forgave us. God, we give you thanks and we love you unconditionally. We love you so much, God. We give you thanks today, Lord. Amen. Amen. So.